What's up, Hacksters? Today we're taking a look at the Nordic Thingy 91, which is a cellular IoT development kit from Nordic Semiconductor. Very excited to open this up. I think we'll take a look at it first, and then we'll go through more of this information if we need to. So here we have a giant envelope. And what have we here? We have a couple of t-shirts. Oh, cool. This is pretty rad, actually. Very basic black tee with some gold design on it. This is actually rad. I would totally wear this. <laughs> Plus, I need more t-shirts during the quarantine. Thank you, Nordic. And we get a little sticker. I've got my eyes on the prize, so we're gonna go fast until we get there. Whoa! All kinds of swag. I see another board in here. A little camera cover. I love these things. They're great for security. We've got a little USB multi-cable. Three-in-one charge cable. Rad! Of course, I have to share this with the people back at the office once we're there again. And I promise I will. <laughs> But the things that I'm most excited about are mainly this thing, the Nordic Thingy 91, most specifically, a cellular IoT prototyping platform. Really excited that they've sent us one of these. You can go to nordicsemi.com slash thingy91 to find out more. And let's get this open. There should be, yeah, there's a couple of numbers on here. On a sticker on the side, there is the IMEI, which I will need later on, certifications and whatnot. Let's open this up. So comes open really easily. We've got the Nordic Thingy 91, a little booklet showing where the SIM card is. You gotta put the SIM card in and then you, what is number two there? I'm not actually sure. And then three, you go to the Thingy91 page on nordicsemi.com. So here we have a rugged little container. It's orange and cute, which is very important. Here is the included iBasis SIM card. So this is a cellular IoT kit and it comes with a SIM card from iBasis that is preloaded with 10 megabytes of data transfer included. So you can get started already, uh, but you can also expand that if you want to. I'm assuming that you would pay for the additional data, but the first 10 megs are free. Oh, and there's a little scratch off for the info so I don't have to hide it on the video. How nice. We've got a little USB connector covering here and it's a little micro USB port. It says again, the URL on here, nordicsemi.com slash thingy. That's kind of great. They've been really clear about where you go to get started. You know that sometimes these things are underdocumented. This one does not seem to be awful. There's a little mesh over here. I assume that that's next to the buzzer. So there's an included buzzer as well as a ton of different sensors. Ooh, it might be for warmth as well because the lithium polymer battery is right in here. Ha! Huh. Oh wow, everything's already attached. Cool. So look at this guy. The brains of the operation is right here. That is the NRF9160. And here is the nano SIM slot there for that SIM card that we got from Basis. I'm gonna try and not show off my IMEI too much, but I don't think it matters. So we have the spot for the SIM card. We've got a user programmable button right here. We've got an NFC antenna. So that's what this boy is. This is so that you can communicate over NFC. There's a number of different communication protocols supported, including NFC, as well as obviously cellular. We've got multi-band LTE. So you're able to do narrow band IOT over a number of different bands, which is pretty rad. That's possible using this wideband antenna that's right here. That's your cellular antenna. Then you also have another little spot for an LTE antenna if you want to add your own, I assume. This has an ARM Cortex-M33 inside of it as well for application processing. And then there's another part of the system that handles the communication. Oh yeah, here's a spot for the GPS antenna. This whole thing uh, inside of here, the reason the kit is called the Nordic Thingy 91 is it's based on an NRF9160 system and package, and that includes your GPS localization. So when we log on to the online interface, you're gonna see what that looks like, except that I'm gonna hide it so that you don't, <laughs> you don't see where I am. But yeah, you are able to see that, which is pretty cool. There is also another chip on here that supports more localized connections. If you wanna do, for example, Bluetooth Low Energy or Zigbee or Thread, you can accomplish that. So let's see what else we have on here. You've got an accelerometer, you can see the little icon for that here. This device is sort of designed for asset tracking and there is an application that comes loaded on it for that. So you've got an impact sensor with a high G accelerometer. You've also got a more chilled out accelerometer that is for uh, general sort of orientation sensing and things like that. So two accelerometers with different purposes. Yeah, mostly this is designed for asset tracking, but what I think I'm gonna do with it is make some kind of a wearable device. And that's why I'm excited about the on-off switch because that is so imperative for wearables. It makes them so much more actually wearable. I'm gonna pull out these clips on the side here and try to detach it from the case. Oh. 
oh, that's a little difficult. Probably a good thing. Here we go. So, oh wow, look, the battery is just nested beautifully in there. Over here is a debug connector for external debugging. You've got your micro USB port for charging that battery, your on off switch. This first switch that I pointed at before is not an on off switch. That one is actually for switching between the NRF 91 and the NRF 52. So I guess this may be a single development board that they're using for both of them. That's interesting. The 52 is an earlier kit that uses a different chip that goes only over Bluetooth low energy. So this is sort of the cellular version of that. And you can tell because this one is orange and sort of helps differentiate between the two. So yeah, you have this buzzer that I talked about. You can use that to create user alerts. Here is a, an air sensor. So from that one, you get temperature, air quality, humidity, and air pressure, all kinds of stuff on here. And with the temperature and air pressure, you could get altitude as well. It's always a handy thing to have in your back pocket, maybe literally. Next to the buzzer, you also have a light level and color sensor for determining if your package has been opened, for example. Inversely, you have some LEDs here that you can program along with it. And on this board, you also have four MOSFETs for driving things like stepper motors. So now that we've unboxed this and gone over the basic features, I'm going to create a second video of the setup process along with an accompanying Hackster tutorial. Stay tuned for that tomorrow, and we'll see you soon. Yeah.